Hello and welcome to the Global Podcast. My name is Corin Horn, and we're here to talk a little bit about what's going on in the world of global conflict, a battlefield community playing on PC. Go ahead and visit us at global-conflict.org to know a little bit more about what we do and what we're all about. With me today, I've got the general of the Guild of Calamitous Intent, Fields. Hello. Uh, a high command from the Guild, Rob Willis. Evening all. Another high command from the Guild, Sanity Rocks. Hey everyone, how's it going? And a lowly peon from the 9th, Tia Salt. I'm not from the 9th, but hello. <laughs> hello <everyone>. What? <laughs> He's a neutral. Sure. You're neutral. Thanks, T. Thanks He's for from nothing. the three and one fourth. <laughs> so today, guys, was the first attack uh, from ninth, and since there's nobody here um, to talk about it, I guess we're gonna have a kind of a biased view of the battle day. But um, I no. personally, yeah, I, maybe. Well, I was casting, so hopefully I can give an, a little bit more of a overview of what happened. Um, Dragon Pass. I heard the first round of the day was amazing. Um, Feels did you did you field command that or is that somebody Me? else? Yeah. I was not even. I was actually late because my work ran late today. Um, I was not field commanding it. I think it was Wildcard field commanding that one. Yes, it was. Yeah, he was uh, commanding it uh, since he commanded it. I think it was he played in the BFI. Yeah, um, it sounded like a lot of fun. Were did any of you get a chance to play in that round? I played for all three of the rounds. It was uh, coming back from the BFI where we absolutely got. Stomps. Uh, I think if you all remember the rounds, then we actually, uh, it was definitely a change. It felt even more uh, even this time round. It was a uh, good surprise. It was a good, good turnaround from our side. It was very good for the uh, very, very good play by the night. Yeah. Um, so just to do a quick overview of the battle day before we go a little bit more in depth. Um, the ninth were able to secure one territory, which was the Caribbean. So they are one territory away from. Um, Claiming that middle um, North American slash Caribbean area, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's the risk map, and you can go ahead and check that out on the. We'll have a link to it on the YouTube channel. Stuff. So, um, out of four attacks, they were only allowed to get one battle. I think uh, on on a whole field, your army did a pretty good job today. Yeah, they did really well. I was really impressed with them, especially because I got here, like I said, a little bit late. Um, and the first round was a little bit jittery on that one. It came out really, really close, and I was really happy to see that. The first round of the day, if it's that close, you know that the rest of the game, the rest of the battle day, is going to be really high morale for everyone. Because even though my army turned up on the positive today, we ended up defending more territories than we lost. I'd like to always point out that you know, we're here as a whole, as a community, to play together and have fun. And those really close rounds are exactly what we're all about. We want to try to facilitate that type of um, competitive atmosphere all the time. So it was really good to see that. That's a really positive boon for everyone. And um, beyond that point, uh, I have seen on Rogue Transmission and ha uh, Hainan, Hainan, Hainan Resort. Yeah, I don't know. And those were also really fun. The Rogue Transmission didn't go so well. That could be attributed to a couple different things that happened. But Hainan Resort went really, really well. And we ended up just kind of winning round after round after that point and it was just a really fun battle day for us and a really really good um really good defense for my army yeah i felt the same way and, and to echo what you said when you when you start a day the two ticket win or difference for a round i mean that's an epic way to start yeah. a battle day and to finish with a 40 ticket difference too is um i think it just shows how even this campaign hopefully is going to be and how much uh effort each hc has put into getting you know really good core of players to, to rely on um rob what did you see in the battle day like you've kind of are you proud of your army uh yeah i was definitely proud of the army uh this seemed to be a bit more aggressive today we seem to play to our strengths infantry wise i think we've had some problems with the infantry past maps and especially high name resort and it, it just felt like we haven't worked together um been a number of factors there but i feel like we've definitely come together more of an army yeah i felt yeah. that watching um like i cast it all day i didn't actually get a chance to play but casting all day it really felt like you guys um i guess we um the army gosi was able to kind of uh get their squads pushing a little bit more together than they did in the bfi um you know the ninth did a really good job of that on rogue they felt like they were Kind of fields had you on on edge. It felt like most of that most of that map. Um, 
uh, that on on Rogue it just felt like they were they did a really good job of stre- stretching you guys out pretty thin on Rogue transmission. Yeah, definitely. We had some. I mean, we had a couple of communication and uh, organizational problems going on as well. But I mean, they did a really good job at uh, bottling us in, and we'll have to figure out a way to kind of break out of that in the future. But I mean, it was a good. It was a. It was a tough couple rounds. But I was really pleased to see how many people stuck around through it, who played through it with us, and then who, you know, kept going through the next couple rounds to get the victories that we really needed for the rest of the day. Yeah, and I mean, you guys had some really good defenses today. Like holding Argentina, I think, is the biggest thing too, because um, that would have given them the whole of South America. And uh, losing California, especially too, you guys definitely dug in and and held it out when you needed to. Um, TSL, did you get a chance to play today? Yeah, I played the uh, first three rounds, um, which were all uh, Dragon Pass, but it was amazing. Yeah, that's awesome, dude. I, uh, Insanity, did you get a chance to your feet wet and play a little bit, or were you stuck uh, being a volunteer to sit out? Um, no, I was I was in support mode um, and, and making sure that the, the new people had time to play and to get immersed in, in the GC way. And uh, I just sort of want to echo what, what Rob was saying, that... Uh, it was really great seeing everyone come together, uh, even even with with Rogue. Um, you know, we we dug in and uh, fought hard. Uh, I and to be fair, uh, it really wasn't communicated uh, that well, in my opinion. Maybe it, maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. Uh, how important Argentina and California were, and I think it just speaks to the character of Gosi that we were just able to come together, uh, bond work towards our objectives and and hold those territories so my hat's off no um like what you i saw i saw the same thing you saw uh pretty much the whole day was just go see coming together and and playing saw some interesting play too um saw some sweet plays by uh av it was his first day um squad leading i think today and that was really cool for me to see was a guy who's i think his second or third battle day and already squad leading and i think that tell like those kind of people are going to probably stick around in gc like i, I want to say to those people who are you know um thinking about squad leading in the near future you know, it's for the veterans it's not man like get in there right guys like just just get in there and, and try at least to get their feet wet you know yeah of course i was really impressed with everyone who stepped up today to try something new and did exceedingly well at it well, we had a you know we had a couple new guys that came in with the redditors a couple weeks ago who wanted to try squad leading today, and everyone just did excellent. I was really impressed just across the board with everyone. That's all I had to say. Yeah, you got you guys had a pretty good battle day. So um, this week, what what can um you know it's the tables have turned, so most of the ghosts here kind of understand what a defense week is like. What can most of your army uh, anticipate for an attack week? Hmm, um, that's a good question. Obviously, we can't give away our territories we're going to be going for, but I can say that it's going to be a very full week next week, um, especially with our officers and one HC person that I know will be there, possibly more, but probably not so much. Um, Insanity has... A lot of us are, are going to be absent next week um, just due to real-world things, but there will be a battle day. There will be people here to conduct it, so make sure that if you're in the Ghosty Army that you do show up. And if you don't, I will see you and come to your house and put a snake in your bed. That's fucking scary, bro. Hey, man, this is the Guild of Calamitous Intent, not the Guild of Rainbows and Sprinkle Unicorn Cupcake time, okay? You, heck, well, you did have a kitten and ri- a kitten and rainbow time. You are all over the map, man. You have one army that's like the beautiful things in life and the other one that will just kill you at not showing up. Make Some... sure you guys sign up, too, if you're listening in. Uh, get in the ABC home and definitely sign up for the next battle day because it's going to be... Important for eat both armies for the ninth and go see. Um, I want to I want to talk about specifics, man. What did you guys see today? What did you guys see in the battle that like you were like, oh man, that was fucking really cool, or or uh, couldn't believe that happened. Anybody got anything? Well, one of the things that I seen, and 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 Corn, you've seen it too. Um, and Rob touched upon it is I think our comfort level in attacking flags and attacking back flags. Um, I think that there's a a level of confidence that has been reached in our army where the FCs can say, okay, guys, I need you to hit this flag. And, and with some degree of, uh, 
assuredness, you know, they're going to hit that flag and, and, you know, if not take it, blink it and force the other army to react to them. Uh, I think there was a lot, I think the funny moment I had in this day, and I was in the game, was the high end resort second round, where I just randomly went to a back flag and I saw, I think, 15, maybe 20 guys just spawn there. Sure, so you see that on the commander's, <laughs> from the commander's screen? I remember that scene. I think it was on Echo on Hainan that you, yeah. you you went there and then I just saw like their whole army was there and I was like, Rob, what did you do? You poked the bear again. It was uh, like then, a swarm of wasps. Then I went to Delta. I ran to Delta and we just sort of all went, went there. I saw all the army go, okay, they're following me. It was like a mambo train. It was great. I loved it. I think one of my favorite moments, I didn't actually get to play today, but one of my favorites was... um. I was watching the spectating on the stream, which Corrin and the TAs were so grateful to put up for us and was really entertaining to watch. But there was at least one moment where I saw JJ Danwa. He was running through that Echo Point garage on Dawnbreaker and that building. He was in the garage. He runs around a corner and like frags two guys right away, right? And then he turns around and bam, there's the enemy attack chopper just sitting there. I have no idea what it's doing there, <laughs> but he pulls out his RPG and just hits it and it blows up and he gets like that kill too. I was just like, this guy is such a badass. It was so great. There's no wonder we call him DJ Danoise. <laughs> Danoise. Yeah, new guy oh, already getting uh, Raz for his name. Another part I saw was um same map, Dawnbreaker. Marcy was sitting on Alpha pretty, like pretty much the whole time defending it. And uh, Rob, your squad was going into um into Alpha from that parking garage between Alpha and Bravo. You and JD yeah, and I can't oh, yeah. remember. And I'm I'm in I'm in Marcy's uh, spectator mode. Like I'm on the first person, and you guys run across the street like little ducklings. Like you you're the mama duck, and the ducklings behind you. <laughs> that was pretty just, cool. Like, lines up <laughs> and just is like, well, I guess I get four free kills then. It's like, but um, one of you actually ended up going away, and JD was left to hang and dry, desperately trying to shoot an RPG at the OPAA. That, that was, was fair play. That, that, that was me. I, mean, I think who was a girl of it at the time. He said, "Yeah, it's clear. It's fine when it comes to Like, yeah, okay, <laughs> bet. I'll just go." Except for that one OP unit, just watching, waiting. It was it was really funny to watch. If you get a chance, Rob or anybody watch, watching, definitely go um, check it out. I did um, get him back though. I did actually get him back. With did yeah. Point. Sure. Um, in gears a bit. I want to talk about, I guess, the logistics behind the battle day today. Um. Starfish should put up a post about uh, the commander mode and round switching, you know, with uh, people coming in commander mode and then restarting the round. We've had a bit of an issue and those that's what uh, lends to our lagging between rounds. So um, if you've got an idea or you've heard of a fix, um, look up Starfisher's post and uh, put in uh, put in that fix or link it to that fix because it, whatever would help would be awesome to just thing, get things um, running a bit more smoothly. Um, again, to touch on something, uh, I'm going to ask you, Fields. Um, today we had a bit of a, we, you know, we had the classic GC, I want to say, problem solving, where there was a question about seat switching, and then it was resolved super quickly, right? Uh, I, you know what? I'm not even knowledgeable enough about the chapters <laughs> to understand what that's all about. So I, apparently, it's a problem. I, but we, I mean, my Air Force was quick to agree to not do it, and we got, we made it a rule like right then and there to not do it so as far as i know it's actually in the fair play rules right now that we don't do seat swapping and it's like an official thing yeah so so what happened was we, we talked about it on the stream because for sure was like love it he said that it wasn't a fair play rule and then they just wanted to address it today and i just want to you know congratulate the air force guy for um being able to uh you know getting getting in there and just taking them taking care of it like that and just having to deal with it so um yeah that that was pretty awesome and then so one more thing about logistics i want to touch about is like um i know we had a couple instances today where it took a really long time for us to get to the next map or to the next um we have to remember that um we are a big community people are volunteering their time to organize so when it will run smoothly we have to try to be as patient as possible and ultimately it's the attacking armies their own time that they're working. so um Appreciate everyone being patient as they were. I mean, on the stream, we were getting pretty uh, strapped for things to talk about. <laughs> so um, we felt the brunt of it probably too because we're trying to entertain you guys. Uh, well, wow. there was a picture that was going around. Anyways, um, T, I think <laughs> you wanted to talk about um, uh, some about team play. Is that right? 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I flew for the first time with someone I'd never met before, who's a new sign up, I think, this week. And uh, I, I just, I really admire the fact that they were amazing at team play. Um, I mean, I've seen that in a couple of squads so far um, that I've played with, with new sign-ups who just get sit straight in with the GC crowd. I mean, uh, they've taken the orders really well, uh, team playing really well, doing everything that I've seen veteran players do uh, for the last um, couple of battle days. I mean, you know, I thought it was actually quite amazing the way that we were able to uh, to communicate and uh, lock down most of the the armor column in the first three rounds I think we played. And uh, I thought it was just, um, it was really nice, and I thought I'd mention it, because uh, I think uh, Sir Onion Knight was the guy I was flying with, but uh, we worked really well for the first couple of rounds, yeah, it was good. Yeah, I haven't had any interactions with Sir Onion Knight, but based on his play that I've, that I've seen through casting, and he just definitely seems like a, he's going to be a GC veteran for a while, um, and I feel like that with a lot of guys here, like you said, I feel like, I mean... There's two sides to the coin, right? It's obviously them being pretty chill and cool guys and wanting to play in a community. But then it's like people like Rob Willis, Field, Sanity Rocks, you guys putting in your time to, you know, get them in rounds instead of in and it's the whole GC we talk about this every cast that we just we're all friends. We're all gonna play with each other and against each other at some point. So you know what I mean guys? It's like it's what we're all about. Yeah, yeah of course. That's good. I mean this is a big group of friends before anything else, in my opinion at least. Yeah, sometimes it's hard to lose sight of that when you're trying to kill them all the time. But, yeah. Um, yeah, at the end of the day, that's what we're all about. And close rounds like Dragon Pass and on Dawnbreaker, the last round where I, Gonzo's in the chat being like, I can't watch this. I'm too stressed out. <laughs> well, <laughs> Gonzo. It, to, to me, it's almost like uh, playoff hockey. Two teams just going at it, seven rounds, seven games. But at the end, they all shake hands and they're all good sports about it. So... Yeah, but no old chat. <laughs> but no but old no chat. chat yeah. <laughs> Playoff hacking? I don't. I don't know that. What yeah. is that? Yeah, you have to be very intelligent to understand hockey, I guess. Hawk. <laughs> and on Black that Hawks. note, I think. Black Hawks suck. Yeah, Black Hawks do suck. Um. Anyways, Black on that Hawks? goes, we're gonna wrap up this podcast. <sighs> I want to thank my guests, Fields, Rob Willis, Insanity Rocks, and Teal Salt, and actually, no Mister Blue in the background today. He had yeah. to take off, so sad face. But um, I'm sure he's going to cut this, so I still love you, Blue. Um, anyways, guys, I'll check out the podcast today. Check out the cast live on uh, Battle Day. Uh, check us out at www.global-conflict.org to learn a little bit more what we do and sign up for the next Battle Day, guys. We'll see you next week. <laughs>